Hello guys, welcome to the channel, it's TPM5 with another NBA video. In this one, I'm going to be discussing three NBA trade rumors that have been circulating throughout the NBA world. So, without further ado, let's get started. The first trade sends John Collins to San Antonio alongside Tipethe Lawawu Cabarots in exchange for Thaddeus Young, Derek White, three second round draft picks and a 2023 first rounder which is top five protected just to give the Spurs some extra security. Now before I discuss this trade, if you want more picks to go to Atlanta, I totally understand. But as for my opinion and the rumors I've been seeing, one first rounder has been what is in the um, discussion. Now, the Atlanta Hawks this season have been very poor defensively, currently ranked 27th out of all 30 teams in defensive rating. However, many of the same issues that were being discussed at last year's trade deadline are now being discussed with the Atlanta Hawks, with John Collins reportedly not happy with his role with the team and, you know, the team and him not really looking on the same page. John Collins wants to be more of a focal point in the offense and have more shots dedicated to him in the half-court sets. Now, John Collins is averaging 17 points, 8 rebounds, and 1 block per game, and he's fresh off of that 5-year, $125 million extension they gave him in the offseason. Now, it's been a very poor year for the Atlanta Hawks, and this is one of the moves they can make to, um, you know, better themselves. Now, as I said before, their defensive rating is 27th in the league, which is 114th, uh, 114 uh, rating points for their team. Sorry about that. Now, Derek White himself has had a defensive rating of 112, and that is also on a rather mediocre team as a whole. And to put that into comparison, that's 4.7 defensive rating points higher than Kevin Huerta, who's at 116.8, and that's been the shooting guard that the Atlanta Hawks have put next to Trae Young for the majority of the season. So instantly, that's a move that will improve their defense next to Trae Young, which has been a key issue for them in that Trae Young era. Now, when you look at Thaddeus Young, he's a very useful veteran that played very well last year, and he has you know, historically guarded Giannis well, which will be a key asset given that they might face the Bucks in the playoffs. Now, from a San Antonio perspective, John Collins is a young player at the age of 24 that fits their timeline. He's a great rebounder and a solid shot blocker, and he consistently hits the mid-range jumper, and he probably is going to be playing the four. Is he, uh, as I said, he can stretch the floor a bit. Um, the Spurs overall are a young team and can't afford to fit him in, but overall that trade it's probably unlikely, but it's a good theory as well. Make sure you tell me what you think of that. But just as you see with this animation, I'd love it if you guys subscribe to the channel and support me. Also, like the video too. And onto the second trade of the video, which will send Marvin Bagley to Detroit. In exchange, the Sacramento Kings get Kelly Olynyk, uh, uh, two second round draft picks, and then a lottery protected pick, which most likely won't be conveyed from Detroit. So from a Kings perspective, you move on from a former number two pick who has not quite gelled into the team, uh, given you know many circumstances with his father, De'Aaron Fox, and just the team itself. It hasn't worked out. They offload him uh, to Detroit, and they get Kelly Olynyk back. Now Kelly Olynyk is a player you know that's seemingly wasting away on a rebuilding Detroit Pistons team. He's averaging 12.6 points and 5.5 rebounds. He's been a guy that can stretch the floor, making over a three uh, per game during his career, and so far shooting 31% this season. A bit of a slump, however, during his time in Houston, in his 24 game stint there, he was averaging around 19 points and 8.4 rebounds and 55% shooting from the field. So it's pretty clear that his 13 games in Detroit so far have been a bit of a slump and aren't going to you know, be what he's characterized that for the rest of the year. So from a Pistons perspective, you get Marvin Bagley, who's a guy that still has high upside, and despite only averaging 9 points and 7 boards so far this season, was still a former number 2 pick and holds a large uh, amount of potential. We don't know how he's going to develop. Um, you know, he still has shown promise as a shooter or a defender. Obviously, that was, you know, the two areas that he was lauded in out of um, college from Duke. Uh, he has not really been able to find momentum, and I think if the Pistons were to get him, just ensuring that he maintains health will give him the best chance to succeed in this league. I think that uh, the draft compensation is probably a little bit on the low side, but, you know, again, you guys tell me in the comments how you feel about that. However, with that all said, 
On to the final trade of the video, which gives the New Orleans Pelicans much needed playmaking in the form of Goran Dragic. In exchange, the Raptors get Sedaransky's expiring deal, Garrett Temple's deal for the rest of this season and next season, and then in, before the 2023-24 season, it's non-guaranteed, meaning they can just wave it off completely. And for their troubles of taking on Garrett Temple now, who can help them a little bit on the defensive end, they get a second round pick as well. Obviously, Goran Dragic hasn't played much this season and has only averaged 8 points, 3 rebounds, 2 assists in his short uh, time with the team on around 18 minutes per game. The Raptors you know, have been pretty clear that they want to you know, trade him and get a pick back. This is the trade that does that for them. And also, uh, given they're barely in the, uh, in the playoffs, and they're in the luxury tax. This is the deal that also, also cuts some money for them as well, given that Dragic is on around 19 million, whereas Sedaransky and uh, Temple combined or make up about 15 million, really sliding them back down towards, uh, you know, the luxury tax limit and making that more manageable for them as well, given they are most likely to head in a rebuilding team path, despite, you know, their relatively good form now. And then the Pelicans, you know, Goran Dragic is a guy that worked and did some wonderful things for the Miami Heat and um, was a key difference maker for them in that 2020 bubble run. So maybe he can find some form in this off, uh, this season and maybe help them get to the plane. If not, he's an expiring deal and they do have bird rights as well uh, for whatever that's worth. Now that is the end of the video. So please don't forget to like, share and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Peace out.